today you're going to learn how to cook mini tapioca pearls for bubble tea from home. These little black balls may also be known as mini boba, tiny boba, small pearls, and in the industry as 4.5 millimeter tapioca pearls. At a cafe, these would come in a huge bag. This is a giant three kilo size bag of boba. This is how restaurants get it, in a huge bag. It's airtight, and there's usually gonna be one of these things inside to prevent any moisture as well. So when you're making these at home, best to source them in a smaller size package. Today we're cooking the grade A, restaurant quality grade, bubble tea shop ingredient. These are considered the longer cooking type, not the quick cooking type. These mini tapioca, when they're in their raw state, they tend to break quite easily. So just go ahead and throw away little broken bits or powder before you start cooking. Even though this bag may look really sturdy, believe me, you don't wanna drop it. The little bobas inside are very, very delicate. Once you open this, you wanna make sure to put it into an airtight container because if it gets moisture in it, it will affect the boba itself, won't make it taste right, the consistency will be off, and also it will start to kind of come apart. So definitely make sure you pop it into an airtight container. If you're interested in cooking regular size black tapioca pearls, I will go ahead and link that video here. And alternatively, if you would like to know how to cook a big batch of boba for your restaurant or cafe, I will put that link in the description below, along with a link on how to cook white tapioca pearls. So let's get started. The benefit of the smaller size tapioca is that the cooking time is cut in half. For the normal size tapioca pearl, the actual cooking time is 45 minutes. But for these mini tapioca pearls, it's just over 20. So for this recipe today, I'm going to be doing a half a cup of the mini tapioca pearls to four cups of water. This is just because I am only making a couple drinks today. But either way, I wanna make sure that I have a pot that is double or more the size of the amount of water that I'm going to be boiling. Because when you start boiling water, it expands in size and we wanna make sure that obviously it doesn't boil over the sides of the pot. You can use an induction stove, an electric stove, or a stove with a flame. Anything will do. You just wanna make sure that it's powerful enough so that way you can get your water to a rolling boil. You'll also need something to measure out your tapioca and your water. I have two different options here. This one actually gives me milliliters and ounces, but if you have an actual just cup, you know in America you've got just a cup like that, um, you can use that for your measurements as well. It doesn't have to be exact in terms of milliliters and ounces. We're more going for volume with this recipe. For the last step, when we're going to be washing it, we wanna have a sieve that is very, very fine mesh not quite as fine as a jelly strainer, but if you go for a normal colander, the size of the mini tapioca will actually go straight through it. I picked this up, it was just a pound or the equivalent of about a dollar, um, and it's just made out of plastic, but it's got just the right size to where the mini tapioca won't go through it after it's cooked, and the water will still go through it quite easily. And then of course, for stirring the boba, you'll just need a spoon. So first we wanna go ahead and put our water into the pot. And it's best if you are able to use already hot water and that will cut down on the time that it takes for your pot to get to a rolling boil. And as I mentioned today, I'm gonna to be doing four cups of water and that's almost a liter. All right, so I'm going to put the lid on and turn on my stove and get it up to a rolling boil. So for me, I know that I will be turning it on to number six, but if you are using a flame, it would probably be a medium high to high in order to get it to that rolling boil state. So waiting for it to boil should take anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes or all the way up to 30 minutes depending on how much water you're boiling and what the temperature of the water was when you put it into the pot. So I'll check back on it in a little bit. All right, so now that our water is at a rolling boil, I've went ahead and measured out a half cup of the mini tapioca pearls and I'm going to slowly add it to the boiling water. I'm gonna do this in a slow circular motion and then that way when I put all of them in there, they'll be spread out quite evenly. What I don't wanna do is just dump the whole thing in so it's like a giant clump. 
this is really, really hot water. So I just wanna caution you with that. It is boiling and it will be very hot to touch. So if you are a young person, I would recommend adult supervision. As soon as we've put the boba into the pot of boiling water, we wanna go ahead and set two timers. The first one is for 15 minutes. Then you wanna add a second timer for seven minutes. The seven minute timer represents when you're supposed to take the lid off completely and give it a really good careful stir. And the 15 minute timer is the amount of time that it will take to cook these pearls in the boiling state. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on and we're gonna bring it back up to a boil. Now, as soon as we get it back to a boil, we're gonna lower the temperature just a bit. So for me, I'm gonna leave it on level six to get it back to that boil. As soon as it starts boiling, I'm going to turn it down to level five. And at that point, I'm also going to cock my lid just a touch to allow a lot of the air to escape. Now, some people prefer to stir their tapioca as soon as they put it into the boiling water, and that's totally fine. It's completely up to you what you would like to do. Personally, for me, I find that putting it in, it rises automatically, and I never have any problems with clumps in the method that I use to cook my tapioca. But if you're unsure, then go ahead and give it a bit of a stir. But just make sure you do it really, really delicately, because at this point, the tapioca pearls are very delicate still, and we don't want to break them up or actually turn them into a giant clump or anything. So it seems to be cooking really nicely. It's at a low rolling boil. The tapioca is moving around quite nicely as well. Everything looks like it's going good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check on it again when my seven minute timer is up. If you're liking this video so far, please click that like button, share it with a friend, and subscribe, of course. Thanks so much. All right, our halfway timer of seven minutes has gone off, so let's go ahead and see how it looks and give it a really good stir. All right, that's looking really good. I don't feel any clumps and I don't feel anything sticking to the bottom either. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the lid back on at an angle there and we'll let it keep cooking. So one thing I'd like to mention while we're waiting for this to cook is the fact that boba, AKA tapioca pearl, when it's cooked and it's nice and warm and just looks amazing and you just can't wait to drink it, it really should be consumed within four hours. Now some people might say, can I put it in the fridge and keep it overnight? Personally, I wouldn't. But if you want to do that, it's totally up to you. I've heard of some people keeping it in the fridge once it's cooked or in the freezer as well. And you know what? To each their own. However you want to consume it once it's cooked, it's up to you. However, I wouldn't leave it out at room temperature for more than four hours. Just simply because at that point, you know, there could be bacteria growth or some organisms could have gotten into it while it was sitting out. So if you are gonna leave it out, make sure you keep it in some sort of container that doesn't allow for any dust particles or anything to come in contact with it. But regardless of everything, I would say personally, and the majority of the people who are big connoisseurs would say to consume it within four hours of cooking it. That's when you're gonna get the real, true, amazing flavor and consistency and texture of the cooked boba. All right, so our 15 minute timer has gone off, which means that these mini tapioca pearls have been cooking at a very strong rolling boil for 15 minutes. They had at least one stir, and so now we are going to go to the second part of the cooking process, which is to turn off the heat completely and let them rest in that nice, hot, gooey, liquidy solution until they are fully cooked. All right, so I'm going to turn off the heat Give it one more quick stir. Make sure everything's looking good there. Nothing is stuck to the bottom. It's really nice. Put the lid back on. And we're gonna let it sit here now for seven minutes. 
So go ahead and set your timer for seven minutes. And as we're waiting for the last seven minutes for the boba to rest on the stove with no heat, I wanted to share with you different sweetening options in order to get your boba at that wonderful optimal sweet taste. Once it's done resting, which you will see in just a minute, we will take it over to the sink and rinse it out. Now at that point, you wanna go ahead and sweeten it and let it sit in that syrupy solution for about 10 minutes before consuming. That gives it enough time to expel a lot of the water and intake a lot of the sweetness. So it's not just coating the outside of it, but it actually goes into it as well. It gives it that really amazing taste and flavor. So I've got a few options to show you here. So one that is very popular is honey boba. We can use regular honey or longan honey. I personally really like a mixture of honey and brown sugar mixed together with a little bit of hot water. That's one of my favorites, and that's the one that we used in all of my shops. Another very tasty and of course trendy way to sweeten your boba is with the tiger brown sugar. Now this can either be made by hand or you can buy it pre-made from a company, but this is nice and thick and it does a great job coating and sweetening your boba. Another easy thing to do, especially if you own a bubble tea shop and you already have this in stock, is to sweeten it with some fructose. Now this will give it a really, really bright sugary flavor. So just bear that in mind. A little bit of fructose goes a long way. And last but not least would be a simple syrup solution made from either white sugar or brown sugar or any type of sugar that you prefer. And that one is also very popular and that is the easiest one to do from home. So I think for today's video, I'm going to use some of this very tasty and trendy tiger brown sugar syrup that I bought and uh, see how it tastes with the mini tapioca pearls. And if I didn't have this, then I would go to my favorite, which would be a mixture of honey and brown sugar dissolved really well with some hot water. And that is my go-to favorite that I would definitely be doing from home. Okay, so our final seven minute timer has gone off. So again, we've done a full 15 minute cooking with the rolling boil, and then we let it set for seven minutes stirring it halfway in between and then stirring it again before the seven minute timer. So it is ready. I'm going to take it very carefully because it is hot and I'm going to move it over to my sink with my sieve and we're going to give it a really good rinse. All right, so first we're going to turn on the water, cold. Then we're going to pour our mini tapioca in here. And as you can see, the sieve is the perfect size because the mini tapioca isn't going through it, the water is. But if I had put it into a normal colander, the boba would have gone straight through the little holes. All right, so that's it. We just wanna make sure to get rid of any of the gunk or any of that brown liquid. And it's ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and sweeten it up now. Okay, now I'm going to transfer mini tapiocas into my bowl of choice. Looking good. Now all we need to do is just sweeten them up. All right, so I've got my brown sugar syrup mixture here. I'm just gonna pour a good old glug in there. And we will give it a nice little stir. Make sure that all of the bobas get that goodness. All right, and we're just gonna let it sit here for about 10 minutes so it can soak up all of the sweetness. All right, so our cooked tapioca has been sitting in its solution for 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Looks really, really good. Oh yeah, that is perfect. It's nice and soft, got a little bit of a bite, but nothing like you're chewing through it. It's just nice and soft, almost like 
a very firm marshmallow. It's kind of, you know, really small, so when you go to bite down on them, they kind of escape from your teeth when you chew down on them, if that makes sense. Whereas with a normal sized tapioca pearl, you would kind of be able to bite down on each one individually. Where it's almost like these, you're kind of trying to grab them in between as you bite down. It's, it's very strange, interesting feeling, actually. I think it would be kind of fun to have these and have a scoop of tapioca also and then that way you're getting a big bite of the tapioca the big kind and then you're getting a small bite of the little kind i just think that would be a really fun experience but these ones are so cute and adorable and i just think they would go amazing in so many different types of drinks and i really like that tiger syrup as well it's got a really nice sweet deep texture to it very enjoyable. I went ahead and made up some Hokkaido milk tea in advance, and I've got it right here. If you'd like to know how to make a Hokkaido milk tea from powder, I will go ahead and put that link right there, and I'll also put it down in the description. I'm gonna go ahead and add my mini tapioca pearls to my Hokkaido milk tea, and let's see how it tastes. All right, I filled it all the way up to the top. Let's give it a little bit of a stir. Make sure any of that extra brown sugar syrup is kind of stirred in there. But doesn't that look so cute? With the little mini tapioca bobas. Oh, they're so cute. Mm. Oh, wow. That is so much fun. That definitely gives you a lot to chew on. No pun intended. Those are so tiny. And because I'm using my big boba straw, they just like came up all of a sudden and I was just not expecting it. I mean, I've definitely had these before, don't get me wrong, but you just kind of forget, I guess. I'm so used to drinking the boba and it just kind of slowly makes its way up the straw. But these just come up real fast. If you are not expecting it, it will definitely take you by surprise. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's like they're all up in my mouth and it's just it's going crazy it's really good of course the drink is good but it's just fun to have the mini tapioca pearls in there as well i can definitely say that if you are able to get access to these they're a lot of fun to make they take half the time to cook as the regular tapioca pearl size and um they're just a lot of fun to drink and they taste exactly like the normal tapioca pearls the only difference is they're itsy bitsy tiny little baby bobas so cute there's definitely a lot of chewage happening right now. Very chewy. Well, thanks so much for joining me today as I showed you how to make these adorable little mini tapioca pearls from home. I really appreciate you leaving a comment below and letting me know. Have you ever tried the mini version before? Have you ever tried making them from home? Is it something that you would consider doing and do you like them? Please feel free to click that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I bring you a brand new Jinx video every week, including fun videos like how to make mini boba. See you soon.